anyone from New York in the audience? Yeah. You, you might be able to tell, uh, you know, from the accent, but I'm actually not from around here. Um, <laughs> I'm actually not even from Brooklyn or Queens either. I'm from uh, the UK. Uh, but I'm a huge fan of New York City. I love New York, and I'll tell you the reason why. It's very, very simple. When I was growing up in like rural England, the only way that I saw New York was through comic books, through Marvel comic books specifically. From the very, very beginning uh, of Marvel, New York has been an, in an incredibly important part of, uh, of their universe. And the fact that the adventures of their heroes were set in a real city was something that really meant a lot to me. But of course, it's not just me that loves New York. Um, everybody in our studio loves you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but um, like I said, you know, we're not from around here. Um, we're actually from San Francisco, all the way over in California. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Wow. Jeez, that's cool. Is this a sports thing? Right it's a sports thing, right? Uh, <laughs> OK, whatever. <laughs> My point being, as we well. come all the way from California, and our only reference point is Marvel, when we had to make Hell's Kitchen in the game, um, unfortunately, it came out something like that. Um, I blame that at all. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, that's the vision of, uh, of Marvel that we have. So, welcome to the Marvel Heroes panel here at New York Comic Con 2012. Thank you very, very much for coming. This, as we say, is the Marvel MMO we know you've been waiting for. We know you've been waiting a long time, and we're really sorry we're late. We wanted to show you an early prototype of the game. Um, we have been working on it quite a long time, but, you know, we were doing good things. We were upgrading. So, you know, we're, we're better now than we were back then. Shout out for Quest Pro. So who are we? We are Gazillion Entertainment. Like I said, we're from San Francisco in California. Uh, and we have some experience with the Marvel license. We made a game you may have heard of. It's called Marvel Super Hero Squad Online. It's great. It's live right now. Uh, you can play it at HeroUp.com. It plays in any web browser, uh, Mac, PC, Linux, whatever you want to do. And it's great, especially for kids. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about other stuff. So let me quickly introduce everybody who's here on this panel. My name is Stephen Reed. Uh, I'm Director of Community and Customer Service at Gazillion. To my left is David Brevik. David is... Uh, best known, probably, in the gaming industry as being the man who created Diablo and Diablo 2. Thank you. I love you, too. <laughs> and uh, we didn't see everybody in order here, but at the, uh, my far left, your right, is Matt Group, who's one of our associate producers. So his right, this is going to get confusing, uh, with a hat, oh wait, no, there's two hats, uh, Josh Brook, who is uh, our art director on the game. And last but not least, of course, that there would be TQ Jefferson, who's putting away his game of Smurf Village to pay attention to the panel. <laughs> TQ would be Vice President of Games at Marvel. So let's get going. Here's the big question everyone wants to know about. What the hell is Marvel Heroes? It's great. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, I like that answer. That's good. Okay, well, we're going to try and answer this. And, you know, to try and answer this, the first thing I did was I went and I grabbed one of our marketing presentations. You know, they give these internal presentations. And, you know, it being a marketing presentation, it tended to be, you know, kind of douchey. Um, <laughs> so according to marketing, it's a AAA massive online action RPG. <laughs> where you play as your favorite Marvel heroes and you get it all for free, and apparently it involves thinking wistfully about the title. <laughs> so I made, I made a few notes, uh, like, I don't understand what AAA means. Is that about fixing my car? There's so many buzzwords in there, I can't really understand that. Apparently, we're not going to allow you to make knockoff heroes, which seems really strange. And the free part, I really don't get. Like, I mean, how are we going to make any money? <laughs> I have cats. Also, what the hell is with that guy on the right? I don't... All right, so we're going to break it down for you, and we're going to start from the top. So it's a AAA massive online action RPG, a lovely, lovely acronym. Um, but let's start with AAA. AAA is a term that's thrown around a lot in the gaming industry, and the dirty secret is it doesn't really mean anything. It means whatever you want it to mean at any given point in time. But I like to say that you know we really only have one A in our game, and our A stands for one thing, which is, of course, action! <laughs> Triple action, that's what we have. Punisher approved, and uh, here's a little sample.
wanted to make the game incredibly fast-paced. We wanted it to be easy to pick up and play, and, and obviously, most of all, we wanted it to be fun. And that's why we chose the action RPG uh, as a genre. But obviously, the action part of it is only one part of that massive, crazy acronym there. And one I know that anyone who's an MMO fan is going to want to know about is this word. So how are we massive exactly? Well, we have massive randomized zones, which is incredibly exciting to us. Um, most of Marvel Heroes, most of the game is in these open large zones, which are randomized. And it's, it's actually a first for MMOs. It's not a first for action RPGs. In fact, David pretty much pioneered it with Diablo. Um, but it's very, very exciting to us because as you go in, you can replay these areas again and again. You know how when you've played an MMO like once or twice and basically you can memorize the map and you know exactly where you're going at any given time? Well, not the case in, in Marvel Heroes. You'll be going through and you'll be exploring every time, finding new stuff, finding new mobs, finding new positions for bosses, all kinds of stuff. So it's, it's very, very cool. And of course, at the same time, because these are huge open zones, we call them public combat zones, you can interact and team up with dozens of other players at a time. Yep, we have massive iconic threats as well. Uh, you can battle against the greatest threats in the Marvel Universe. You get to work with other players in these huge open missions. You get to band together. You can see some sentinels in the background here. You can team up to take them down. And then you can gather medals to record your triumphs and to show off to other people. So we got the massive in the online action RPG, but the question really is, where's the RPG? So depending on your age, you might have a different definition of what an RPG is. <laughs> Shout out to the original Redbox Massive, all right? But the, you know, regardless of whether you come to uh, role-playing games from the old D&D days or now you're playing games like Skyrim, they're all very, very similar in their core principles. So what you do is you create a character, you customize that character as you progress, and then, of course, you experience a great story while you're doing it. Now, you may have heard this already, but in our game, you don't oh, actually... Yeah. <laughs> you don't actually uh, play as your own character. In fact, you play as one of the Marvel heroes. And there's actually a really long history of this, again, showing my age. When I was a young lad, I used to play the Marvel Super Heroes role-playing game uh, from TSR back in the early 80s. Yeah, there's a few of us still alive. <laughs> um, and that's even continuing today with uh, the Margaret Weiss uh, Marvel Heroic uh, basic game. But what we really don't want to do in the game, quite simply, is let you create this guy. All right, nobody wants to be the guy with forks and knives taped to his hands. <laughs> so one important thing for us was that we had no knockoffs in the game. You don't want to play Fork and Knife Man, you want to play Wolverine, right? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And considering we don't just have Wolverine, we have a whole bunch of other heroes, uh, 23 announced so far, well, 25 now, strictly speaking. Yeah, buddy. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why you wouldn't want to be one of these guys instead of being, you know, Fork and Knife Man. But I know what you're going to ask me, which is what if there's a whole ton of Wolverines you know, running around on screen at the same time? And there's two answers to this. The first answer is, who the hell cares? <laughs> Get together and form a guild, call yourself the Bubs, and have a good time. <laughs> come to, I'll tell you this, come to the booth if you haven't played the game already. I guarantee you, uh, I've seen people playing all weekend, and as soon as they see multiple Iron Men on screen or whatever else, they're like, hey, that's actually pretty cool especially when you see tons of hulks going at it at the same time. <laughs> um, but at the same time, we're allowing you to customize your character by using alternate costumes. Oh, is that a brown costume? Yeah, I think it might have been. <laughs> <laughs> we have literally hundreds of different costumes in the game. And the man who's responsible for doing all of that and pushing all those costumes through the, top, through the pipeline is Josh Book over here, who's our artist. And Josh is going to tell us a little bit uh, about the costume creation process. Cool. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, been a great project to work on so far, being a long-time comic book fan. And uh, one of the interesting things when we take on a new character is that we go, okay, well, what? And so we're going to work on Hulk. What does Hulk look like, right? And what we realized, as we did a lot of research, is Hulk has actually had a lot of different looks over the years, and everybody in their mind has kind of a different idea of what Hulk is, what he should look like. How purple should his pants be, right? I don't know. There's, he could go from the uh, kind of magenta to the darker to the blue, whatever. Uh, so, so 50 variants of purple pants is what you're saying? That's, yeah, that's yeah, no, we'll, we'll have hundreds of variants of purple pants. It'll just be the whole, <laughs> whole range, no. Uh, no, we were actually looking for more distinct um, 
versions of the different characters. So uh, we take a look at all the uh, different sources. We go through, here is a, uh, this is the Marvel Avengers film uh, movie costume version. Um, Planet Hulk, World War Hulk, you might really like that, yeah. That's a cool one. And then, uh, I don't know, I think some of these we have not seen before. I think right? some of these might be new. This what? Oh, wait, what? <laughs> so that one's probably going to be more. pretty popular. One more? What was that? One more? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Gray Hulk. Gray, Gray yes, skin. Exactly. And then the one that really is out of, I don't know where this comes from. Oh. You're going to have to explain this uh, one to me. Oh. The Maestro? <laughs> My, that is the Maestro Hulk, if people aren't familiar. So. Future imperfect. Yes, yes. Yep. So, Do you want to go into a bit more detail on the Maestro one? I think we have some slides. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about the Maestro a little bit. So, so our process is um, we, we actually we build the art. We have a team of character artists, which are um, they do modeling and they do the sculpting. So what we do is they, they start sculpting in a program called ZBrush, and they build all this intricate detail in the characters and all these different pieces. Um, then we move through that. Uh, and anyway, we start with the different source art. We look at the source art, we work with TQ and the team at Marvel to really come, come up with uh, the really iconic look for these different characters and their costumes. And we pay a lot of attention to detail on them. Um, so then we, we work from here with Miss Marvel. This is the, uh, the classic uh, Miss Marvel. We go from ZBrush to Maya, and then that's the characters you see it in game. So these are the model sheets we've been releasing online. And you've probably um, seen this one if you've been paying attention. Storm is actually playable for the first time here in New York Comic Con, and this is the, the costume we already revealed for her, but we have a couple of other looks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, do we have them here? Anyone remember this one? <laughs> I think you're going to remember this one, though. Best, best costume ever. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And if you, uh, when you play the demo on the, on the floor, that is a drop that is possible. I've seen people running around as Mohawk Storm. It's pretty awesome. But I wanted, to, I wanted to shout out one thing. I'm very excited about this myself. Um, when I was reading those Marvel comics when I was growing up, my favorite character, and still my favorite character, was, of course, Spider-Man. <laughs> and we obviously have a modern costume for him in the game. Um, but um, we decided that we wanted to go something with a little bit more old school, and uh, so we came up with this. And I also want to shout out to Mr. Dan Slot, who's here. Thank you very much for coming, Dan. And I want to say one thing. Anyone who's been pestering Dan over Twitter, Superior Spider-Man is not what you think it is. <laughs> but I can't say anything else. Suffice to say it's good. All right. Thank you very much, Josh. And now we're going to hand it over to David. Because the next big thing in an RPG is, of course, how do you customize your hero? So, you know, we're going to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so one of the uh, principles of the game, and really one of the things that we're trying to achieve, is that my v version of whatever character is different than your version. I think we're going to look at some of the costumes here. Is that we're going to look, look at? We're going to look at a couple of uh, similar heroes. So you'd, yeah, you'd expect so that these guys are going to be tanks, okay, right? right? And, uh, uh, so you would think that both these characters play very, very similarly, but they, but they don't. And we're doing a lot of things uh, that kind of not only speak to their character, but also kind of speak to uh, uh, the differences. And so each one of these you can consider to be kind of its own unique character class. Uh, so what would be different between the Hulk and, and Thing? Uh, well, Hulk, his, his powers are much more like uh, based, offense based, and he does a lot of things at high DPS, does a whole bunch of stuff he can they can both do things like throw cars and leap around, but Hulk, you know, really rips up the street and, and, and things like that. Whereas Hulk, uh, the thing is uh, much more of a group uh, kind of character. He it speaks more to the, kind of his, his personality. He uh, can buff your group, and he, he's a great, great uh, teammate to have on your, on your team. So uh, not only speaks to their personalities, but also yet, yet they're, they play very, very differently. Um, in the game. They have very different skills and, and very different traits. <laughs> Deadpool and, uh, and Wolverine. Um, wait, I think that that would be a good crossover. These characters may also play, they play very differently. Uh, and one of the principles that we're trying to apply, not just to, uh, to every single character, is each character can actually play differently. Uh, this is a principle that I used even in Diablo 2. You've seen it with like the Amazon. You can play with bow or you can play with spear. Same kind of principle applies here. My ideal Wolverine is, uh, I love the X-Force Wolverine. And so uh, 
putting him in that costume and taking a bunch of skills and putting uh, my points in the powers that really build up his bleeds and stuff like that makes it this kind of massacring Wolverine. And if that's the way you want to play, then that, that's, that's great. We're going to give you that option. And so, and then that may be different than somebody else's who's wearing classic brown suit and, uh, and I'm leaping around the screen a bunch and stuff like that and, and very agile. And that may be your ideal Wolverine. So every single character class can actually play differently differently, not just from each other. So uh, it's, it's very deep RPG. <laughs> Deadpool's a little different. Deadpool, Deadpool's a little different. He, uh, he's very different from Wolverine in that he has both ranged attacks and close attack and uh, melee attacks. And uh, he dodges and invade, and yeah, he is insane. It's really fun. He has lots of great uh, quotes. If you put the headphones on, come by the booth and listen to him, play him, it's awesome. He, he has some really great lines. So the vision here is, so the vision here is that not just uh, will each character play different from each other, but everyone plays even different within itself. And we have basically what amounts to well over 20, now well into the mid-20s, announced character classes for this game, which is pretty outrageous. <laughs> All right, thanks, David. And now we're going to hand over to Matt. When Matt isn't wrangling voiceover for our game, of which we have a ton, um, he also helps wrangle artists. So we thought it'd be appropriate here, being here at New York Comic Con to uh, show off some of the motion comic stuff we have. Matt? Yeah, I mean, uh, in Marvel Heroes, you know, we're telling a really deep story, and one of the ways that we want to tell the story is through motion comics. Um, and, you know, my philosophy is the more we can fall in line with the other things that Marvel has done, the better, because Marvel fans will feel right at home. So uh, with our motion comics, we have a variety of uh, motion comic artists that are actually working in the comic books today who are also doing uh, the art for our comics. Um, also, if you guys wanted, at 4 p.m., I think today, right, we're having Yeah, we're doing a signing the Marvel booth. Uh, at the Marvel booth. So some of our motion comic artists will be there as well. Um, and really, our process is very similar to traditional comic books we, where... We couldn't quite magic up Brian Michael Bendis, though. We did manage to get him for PAX, but he wouldn't travel off the, the West Coast. But he is writing um, the entirety of the game from a sort of lead writer standpoint, and he's written all of the motion comics, which is very exciting for us. Yeah, and it's great fun working with like, all this awesome talent from you know, the, you know, the Marvel family. Um, you can see over here um, some of the different steps that we go through for the uh, comic book or the motion comics. Uh, we kind of do the traditional thing where we do pencils and then inks and then colors. Um, and before that, uh, we get the scripts from Brian, and then in house we make our own animatics, uh, which are basically moving storyboards um, with sound associated with them. Josh is actually our director for all of our uh, motion comics. And at the end, you get a nice image like that. Um, we then send it off to a group called Sequence in Canada, who animate it all. And then uh, New Generation Pictures, who's also done uh, Marvel vs. Capcom and the uh, uh, tabletop, uh, I'm sorry, the um, pinball games. Uh, they're handling all of our audio design. So really, we're trying to get it as an authentic of a Marvel experience as possible. And we're going to show you one right now. Not your fault, little one. Homo sapien is the only true work of God. Mutant is the abomination of the devil. God doesn't want mutants. This is the judgment. They hate us so much, just because we are different, just because we are mutant. This is the Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters. I am Charles Xavier, and I have dedicated my life to educating and training mutants. The best and brightest of my students you know as the X-Men. peace and equality, where mutants and human could live together peacefully. But there are those who would die, or kill, to stop this from happening. That is why I've called you here. Anti-mutant activity has grown increasingly violent. Because of the rise in New York City's mutant population, the mutants took it upon themselves to form their own community, Mutant Town. 
But Mutant Town is now under siege by anti-mutant vigilantes. They call themselves the Purifiers. To my frustration, I must tell you, I don't know anything more about them. I need you to go to Mutant Town and help stop the growing violence. Show your support for us. Let the world know that its heroes and its mutants stand together. Nice. Alright, so let's recap and let's go through what we, uh, what we talked about here. So we said we have a massive online action RPG. Let's check in again with that lovely marketing presentation. So it was AAA, we established that, that's all about action, massive online action RPG, play as your favorite Marvel heroes, yep, 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 weird guy staring into space, and all for free. Did someone? Someone added an asterisk to my presentation, there must have been someone from marketing, I think they crept in here. So uh, yeah, David, what is up with the asterisk? What does that mean? What does all for free mean? Uh, it means you can play it all for free. You get to play the whole game for free. I didn't put the asterisk there. That has to be wrong. I didn't see how the entire thing for free. No, 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 no. So what you're saying is, you pick a character. Yes. You start playing. Yes. You play all the way to the end of the game. Yes. And then you can play it again. Over and over. And there are no barriers. No barriers. All free. And no pay for power. No pay for power. Okay. The important question is, how are we going to make money? <laughs> Your cats are going to go hungry. <laughs> I have three cats. Okay, you can buy characters, right? Yes. And you can buy costumes for your yes. characters? Yes. Okay. But? But? You can earn them by playing the game? That's correct. All right. We can probably figure that out. Yes. There you go. All right, we're going to hand over to TQ. He has a few things to talk to you about. I know he, uh, he likes to talk about the core pillars of the Marvel game, which he's always hitting us with at every opportunity. Yeah, um, if you were at uh, the Marvel Games panel earlier, this is going to be a little bit of review for you, but um, uh, for those of you who are new, Marvel has recently uh, taken a, just a hard look at uh, the games that we've, we've made in the past and, and, and what was important to us then and what's important to us moving forward. And in doing that, we, we rededicated ourselves to quality, uh, quality above all else. Um, you know, no, no more 40 rated games, that sort of thing, if we can help it. Um, and it, what, 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 what that got distilled down into was uh, three core pillars. Uh, first and foremost is fun. Seems really obvious, but it's one of those things you need to put it out there and you need to keep it as your guiding light. Fun and engaging gameplay. Gameplay trumps everything else. Second is compelling story. Stories is, is built into Marvel's DNA. We've been doing it for 70 years now, and I hope we do it for 70 more. But it's what we do best. So an engaging story with fleshed out characters, um, with deep, deep, deep uh, backstories, but also uh, presented in a way that is approachable. So if you don't know anything about Deadpool, um, that's fine. But you, you can learn on the way. Uh, if you're uh, uh, the guy that, that's collected every issue of Wolverine and knows him backwards and forth, this game is also for you. Um, and then finally is the uh, true to character experience. It's letting the characters be the characters. Uh, I'll give you a, a very good practical example of how I and my team work with a uh, gazillion on realizing uh, being true to the characters and maintaining fun gameplay. Um, Say uh, they came to me and uh, said, you know what, we found this really ga ga great gameplay where if we gave Spider-Man twin guns, uh, it would just be awesome. It looks great. It's, it's all these cool animations. Well, that's not true to the character. Spider-Man's never going to use a gun. But what we'll do is we'll boil it down to, well, what's, what are you really asking us? You, what are you asking us for? You're asking us for a mechanic where Spidey has rapid fire projectiles. Well, then maybe, you, maybe what you want are web balls then where he fires like small like pellets of, of webbing at people from both of his web shooters. So now you've got that great mechanic, but you haven't broken the character. So it's these pillars that are now driving all of our decisions moving forward. And these guys have been doing an excellent job of like all the, the 20 something that have been announced and I know about all the other ones too, um, of realizing that true to character experience, delivering great story and having it all orbit around fun and engaging gameplay. 
So we have a couple of uh, new characters that we wanted to announce. If you were at the Marvel Games panel, apologies because you've seen these already. Hey there, Human Rocket here. Follow me if you want a good show. And one more. Oh, actually, no, we were going to just segue there because he's yes. a character that has a special ability. Yes, exactly. One of the, one of the things that uh, uh, makes this character compelling is, you know, Nova is also known as the, the, the human rocket. And in order to, to realize that, you need flight. Uh, in most action RPGs, flight really means hover. In this game, flight means flight. Now, when we first talked about this in the studio, I was skeptical. <laughs> I remember the early design meetings about flight. It was a little different than the way it is now. Um, but uh, David, how did we overcome it? Uh, well, we overcame it with a variety of trial and error, actually. But the uh, but in the end, we're very happy with the way it turned out. We feel like this is really opens up the gameplay in a totally unique way. Uh, flying over, dropping down into the group of enemies, and 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 making you know laying waste very quickly. It's it's just a lot of fun. It's a, a really unique mechanic. Uh, I don't think it's ever been done in an action RPG before, and it really just changes the gameplay dramatically. And you can test it out at. You know, from Miss Marvel here flying as well. You can fly indoors. And there was one other character we announced at the, Mar the uh, Marvel Games panel, which we're going to show you here quickly. Time to kick some damn butt. Somebody call for a hero. Luke Cage. Sweet yeah. Christmas. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and for those, wasn't it Javon who asked this? Javon, where are you? Javon Marvel's uh, director of uh, games marketing uh, requested 70s Luke Cage with Afro and Tiara. <laughs> yeah. and you got to you got to have the Tiara. I mean, you know. But there is one more character announcement that we got to make here today. Now, the question I have to ask you is who do you think is the most requested character that we've had since we announced the game? Skull <laughs> Girl's already been announced. They're all shouting at once. All right, all right, all right. All right. You're gonna find out. <laughs> if you again, if you're at the Marvel Games panel, you didn't see the end of this trailer, but you're about to. Eat hot lasers. Let's bust some heads. Time to rearrange some faces! This power is mine to wield! I can feel my power rising. Finally! Finally people can stop asking me about Jean Grey every five seconds. <laughs> Yeah, Jean Grey is in the game, as you can see here in her classic uh, Phoenix costume. And if you're not up to date on uh, what's going on in Marvel Comics, you might be wondering how we can get her in the game. Well, it's our friend Brian Michael Bendis again. He's bringing her back from the... No, wait. Back from the future? No, past? <laughs> forward from the yes, back? Forward to the Future to the... <laughs> anyway. Imperfect. She's in all new X-Men number one, which is coming out very, very soon now. Um, and when we saw this cover and we saw this art and, you know, we knew it was going in, I started hassling Josh every five seconds. It's true. It's probably more like four seconds, but yeah. <laughs> I'm like, we need Marvel Now costumes. We need Marvel Now costumes. So his team went to work, and yep, we have a Jean Grey Marvel Now costume in the back. And other costumes for her too, but you know, that's what we're going to show you today. Okay. So, does anyone have any questions? And before you ask the questions, I'm going to preface with a couple of things. Number one, no, we don't have a release date yet. It'll be done when it's done. 
two, it's really free. Even with the asterisks, we weren't lying. <laughs> Three, yes, you can get into closed beta, um, but uh, we are opening it up on a, on a slow ramp. Um, so don't be disappointed if you don't get picked. Um, and yeah, anyone else who's got any other questions, feel free to line up. Oh, uh, uh, one, more. Uh, one more. One more. We won't answer whether or not character X is oh, yeah. in the game. Character <laughs> is character X in the game? So we're able to put any, pretty much any character from the Marvel Universe in the game. So if they're not in the game at launch, the great thing is we'll be adding tons more over time. We have a yeah. list that's just an enormous list of characters that we want to get in, and we have daily cage fights to try and discern who's going to go in first. So uh, whoever wins the next cage fight gets to put their character in the game. Why don't we start with you? Thunderdome. Um, hi, I'm a very big fan of uh, MMOs and RPGs, and like, I like how the game, um, like, it sucks you in as soon as you start it. I tried out the demo, it's very, very good so far. And my question is, you guys showed uh, tanks, and you guys showed uh, the damage dealers, but do you guys have any support characters? Because after all, you, need, you can't have a team without a support. <laughs> so there are definitely characters that are uh, more group friendly than others. Uh, I, but you know, it takes it takes all types. We don't really have kind of the holy trinity of old uh, MMO school where you got the tank, the DPS, and the healers. It doesn't really make any sense. Uh, this is an action game, and everybody's responsible for themselves. Uh, but there are different characters that play better together, and there's lots of teams and things like that that will really be emphasized. Oh, and uh, my second question is: uh, I see this game is is like is easy for you to get engaged, but is it like a game where it's easy to learn but hard to master? Oh yeah. <laughs> Very much so. Go ahead. Can you play in space at all? Can you play in space? In like space. In the Milky Way galaxy. In Is there a level in space? You mean that kind of thing? Yeah. Uh, we've only announced a few locations that you're going to go to. Uh, some great locations. Uh, Hell's Kitchen, which we've shown off. Uh, we uh, Midtown Manhattan. Uh, uh, Savage Land, a whole bunch of places, uh, but we haven't announced uh, other locations like that so far. Next. So, I know you guys said that the game is now yet and that the story is being worked on, but do you think when you're done you'll have expansions that are based on stories going on in the Marvel Universe? Uh, that's definitely something that we want to try and do. We would love to get more uh, integrated. I mean, we feel like we already are starting to get more integrated with Marvel and the events that are going on, and uh, we would like to try and keep that up as much as possible and do a bunch of, uh, of kind of like cross-universe, uh, you know, uh, welding as much as possible. And really, I think that that, I, you know, I love the comics, and so the more we can do with that, that would be fantastic. Thanks. Part of what I do is, is uh, liaise between Marvel Publishing and Gazillion. So these guys knew about Marvel now before a lot of people knew about Marvel now, and they knew what the characters looked like, and they could start planning the sync story, you know, the comic book stories with what's going on in the game. So yep. we definitely encourage it. My question is somewhat similar to his. Say you were put to put Jib Jubilee in the game, would she be more likely? Now, why would you ask about Jubilee? <laughs> <I wonder. laughs> Would she be more likely to be the current vampire Jubilee or classic <laughs> Jubilee who still has her pre-M Day powers? That's a good question that I can't answer. <laughs> we'll have to think about that one, I think. Sorry. For, from a look standpoint, though, we, we would definitely, I mean, we want to have a wide range of looks for the characters. So if there are, you know, very distinct looks of her that have existed, we're going to work to try to get those in. And powers, too, different powers. Because after M Day, she lost her powers oh, she, and became she lost a vampire power. and yeah. now has vampire powers. That sounds like two no, no powers. No powers for interesting I think, gameplay. I think, I, I think Jubilee makes for a very special case in that she's, in a sense, two characters, like old Jubilee, new Jubilee. So right. that's, that's, yeah. pretty, that's a good one. That's a good question. Let's take two from this side. Hi, I was just wondering are you going to have anything in the way of gear and equipment that you're going to have changed the aspects or? I couldn't hear the question. Gear. 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 Oh, yeah. We, there is gear and equipment. In fact, we're on the seventh item system at this point. But the, uh, uh, it's very important not only to action RPGs, but also, uh, you know, feel like you're, you're doing something. Uh, and uh, we do have an equipment system that we're really proud of at this point. Uh, it doesn't change your look. Your costume is responsible for your look, but it'll change your stats and increase your powers and things like that. And it's randomly generated just like Diablo. Yeah. Next one from there. 
Okay, um, I'm not really a big fan of computer um, online games, but since I played the demo upstairs, I have to say, it's very, very good enough that I really <laughs> want to play it. But I was wondering, are y'all going to expand it from the PC to like the home console systems like PlayStation 3 and such? Because I play some via PlayStation 3 versus PC, but this is like the first PC game I really want to play now. So the good news is, um, well, there's good and bad. <laughs> Here's the good news. Um, we'll be on PC. We're also going to do a Mac version um, after we lock PC version. Locking a Mac right here, so we like Macs. Um, and the aim is for the game to really scale very well, so it'll play on older PCs and, and uh, laptops and that sort of thing. Um, but there aren't any plans for a console version of this. And also, too, are you planning to probably make a free roam version of it for the home console? No. Similar like to DC Universe. Sorry for bringing up DC. <laughs> That's. It's a fair question. It's a fair question. Um, yeah, that would be essentially a completely different game. I think that's yeah. fair to say. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, let's take one from this side and then we'll go back and forth. Um, first of all, David, were you in Blizzard North? Yeah, I was president uh, of Blizzard North. Yeah. Love your work. Thank Great. You. Sorry to, you know, what happened. But, uh, Big, big question for me is, uh, what's your end game going to be like? Is it going to be like Diablo 2 where I farm my ass off, or do I just constantly... I mean, it's great that I can track different characters, but I know people that will just constantly just grind for gear, and they like to see the numbers. He's basically asking you about end game. So basically just end game. Yeah, do I just um, farm more, or do I just... Uh, there's going to be a lot to do in the game. It's going to take... You know, uh, it, there's a story, and you'll play through the story. It's very similar. You can basically take all the cues from Diablo 2. Uh, it's very much like Diablo 2. So, uh, that's when you're asking kind of what a feature of the game might be, ask yourself what would Diablo 2 do, and that's kind of what it is. <laughs> okay, we have some plans. Uh, yeah, I got uh, one question. You're missing a couple of costumes up there. I was recently saw the trailer. A few. Who did we miss? Um, Wolverine, um, issue one from 1980. Um, you know, I brought that up recently. I, I pointed that, that, that one out. That one and from the Jim Lee era, the one, the uh, Candy Ass Man, when they go out of space and face the CR Empire, that would be missing. And um, uh, this one, the Jane Grey's 1970s costume. How you can go wrong with that? Josh. Are, uh, are, you, are you making notes, Josh? What was that? You're making notes? Yeah, yes. yes you're writing yes. this down? Yeah. No, believe, believe me, we are looking at the full range of like every obscure costume that's ever, um, a mainstream and obscure costume that's ever existed for these characters. We're looking at all of them. And some of them, when we're looking for alts, there are, there are some that where it gets a little tricky. Mm -hmm. um, Squirrel Girl has not had a lot of looks over the year. But, but believe me, we are finding all of them. Because so. yep. there's more costumes, there's the Olsen version. There's, oh, there's yeah. loads yeah. more costumes. Yeah. Than yeah. There's, there's a lot more than what we've shown here. Loads. Yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah, not that one. Um, okay. Uh, I had uh, two questions. Uh, one of the questions that I had is, uh, is this game entirely uh, PvE? Are there any uh, PvP aspects to the game? And uh, will be, there be any uh, professions in the game? Like, uh, can you take up technology as Iron Man or something? Crafting? Yeah, crafting, something like that. So uh, we have a bit of a crafting game that uh, revolves around your costume and creating costumes. Uh, you, determining, you get to determine the look and then the stats are randomly generated and so uh, you find components and stuff like that and craft these costumes. Uh, then uh, as for, what was the other part of the question? PVP. 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 Uh, we haven't talked about our PVP plans, but that sure sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, we'll have to just take a couple more guys, I'm afraid. We're going to be, have to clear the room, and I have one more thing for you. So. Yeah, I have two questions. The first question is, um, I know you guys are trying to really hype up playing as multiple characters, but is there anything really like hindering us for just playing as one character for the whole game? You can play as one character for the whole game. Yeah. Yes. If you want to, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah. my second question, do you guys have any plans to bring uh, villains to be playable? Playable villains? Mm. No one's ever suggested that before. <laughs> Next question, that please. Like fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was actually going to be one of my questions, too, whether or not there are plans for Marvel villains, but I'll let you guys think about that one. Um, um, obviously, with the videos and the release and everything you had, a lot of the content seemed like it was voiced over. Um, is that going to continue throughout the entire 
game, planning on having everything voiced over from not only the comics, but as well as like the in-game content? Matt Group. Matt. Yeah, um, I mean, really, we want to make sure that, you know, the voices all fall in line with other things that you'd expect, too. So, uh, you know, like you notice, like Steve Bloom is doing Wolverine for us. He does Wolverine for everything. <laughs> Um, and, you know, we want to have a lot of voiceover to kind of support the, the story that we're telling, uh, not only just in the cutscenes, but when you're in the world. We have a really nice banter system, so if you're playing as Wolverine and I'm playing as Cyclops, we'll say X-Men-ish stuff to each other. So. Right. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. We have a big, big voice cast. All right, one more. Uh, my question is to uh, David. I just want to know sort of the balance between uh, sort of the online public areas and what's going to be instance. Because I do love, you know, when you're able to run into an area and play with strangers, but I hate when you're waiting for like a sentinel to spawn because a group just killed you five <laughs> minutes before you logged on. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, there are things that we're going to do to kind of alleviate that. But um, the, uh, the demo that we have isn't really the, you know, true form of the game. But uh, I'd say at least at least 60, maybe closer to 70% is public space, and okay. uh, the rest is instance. Thank you. All right, we do have a couple more things to do, so I'm just going to have to cut it short, I'm afraid. If you have more questions, uh, feel free to find us on Facebook slash Marvel Heroes. You can find us on Twitter as well, at, uh, with the Massively Multiplayer Marvel Society. Um, but like I said, we had a couple more things that we wanted to say. So you should definitely come and play the game. It's right here on, at Comic Con, at booth uh, 1556, right in the middle of the show floor. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to go up there and, and play it. If you have been by the booth, you might have noticed we're doing this uh, kind of card mission game thing where you basically collect trading cards and then you uh, get loot for turning them in. Um, and as you leave today, make sure you pick up, of course, an exclusive Jean Grey card just for coming by. But I have one more thing. Aww. What? What is that? That's me at 3 o'clock this morning printing these cards. Not really. I didn't print them. But I was there at 3 o'clock in the morning. We'd love you to join us in closed beta. Everybody here. Now, if you've got friends, if you've got friends who want to get in, then do encourage them to sign up for closed beta at marvelheroes.com. It's really easy to do, and you know we can get people in as uh, soon as we can. And that's all we have to say. You rock! Thank you for coming. Make sure you pick up your key on the way out.